Why hello there, this is Box Productions, and welcome back to another episode of Path of Exile. In our last episode, we met someone who was having a bad day. Walked around in some dookie water, and visited the second worst flea market I've ever seen in my life. The shadow whispers and simpers at the Monkey King's feet. When the Monkey King puts his back to the sun, it is the shadow that leads the way. I think I remember seeing a doorway the last time we were here. Let's go check that out. Docks also used to be a nice place to level up. The Monkey King names you slave. No, you are the gems of Rayclast, not the treacherous stones you dig and die for. It is time to bend the Monkey King's ear. Tell him your true name. Well, this is a strange looking little thing. I'm sure we'll need it for something. Oh hey, I remember this guy. Now there's a familiar face. Before you say anything, yes, I did try to kill you. Inexcusable. I allowed pragmatism to overcome honor in a moment of desperation. Please accept my deepest apologies. And what do you say? Can the two of us make a fresh start? Marvelous! Now, as you've clearly noticed, the All Flame has given me another respite from oblivion. Alas, it's a partial success only. I am neither man nor spirit, living nor dead. A state that comes with some rather frustrating restrictions. I know we've only just been reacquainted, but to, to put no finer point on it, I, I need your help. Interested, are we? Oh, splendid! In return, I have a gift or two that I may bestow upon you with a click of my translucent fingers. All you need do is furnish me with a crystal decanter and a juicy piece of fruit. Two humble items that remain agonizingly out of reach for a man in my peculiar situation. Will you look at that? The decanter spiritus. As exquisite today as when I found it all those years ago. <laughs> you may fault the man, but you can't fault his craftsmanship. Well, after picking up the whatchamacallit, let's go explore some more of this area. It's kind of 
hard to notice, but the black guards and the ribbon monsters are actually fighting each other. It's a neat touch. This is the eternal way, pretty and lifeless. Man, this place is clean. But seriously though, what's with all the kill the ribbon monsters? It's like my Christmas nightmares have come to life. Water? More like holy crap! Even the water in this place is trying to kill me. Face plant. You are not a cockroach. Strange. Inundated with cockroaches, I am. Black ones, four limbs, nasty, spiky things. Are you spiky? If so, my ribbons will pluck your spines. Malachi liked spines. Liked my spine. Pretty spine. Bejeweled and bountiful. Enough to make an empire weep. Do you weep, not a cockroach? I do. Tears are infinite. Why, on this very day, I found a new reason to cry. The ribbons are order, clean and polish, serve and protect. Then those cockroaches crawled in, swarmed through the cracks. The ribbon spool is taken, stolen. The black ones want them, my ribbon. Want to wrap the city in black ribbons. Find the spool, not a cockroach. Look to my doorstep, where the ribbons crush cockroaches yet. Bring the spool and I will find gratitude for you. Cockroach. Malachi, first Caso of Davini, 1329 IC. Pretty as porcelain, but her mouth spins like the potter's wheel. That's how I once described Diala. Yet on this day, my lady is as ravishing as a nightmare, radiant as the fullest moon. Diala is my gemling queen, and we shall rule side by side over the world that will soon come to be. Tear 
down the walls that imprison the mind. That is what the gems do. That is their true virtue. The moment my fingertips brushed the cool, silken planes of that first gem, I felt it. My skull ached as if its contents were growing, pressing against the bone, searching for a way to break free. That night, once the wine had dulled the pain enough to allow the onset of sleep, the dreams began. I have not been without them since, nor would I be. Every spark of thaumaturgy that I wield, every device that I forge, every creature that I transfigure, I owe to these lessons cloaked in nightmare. From whence do these precepts hail? Certainly not the mundane grey between my ears. I possess only one reference that bears faith. Translated with unquestionable clarity by that idiot savant, Isius Perandus, the beast. Duryani of the Val knew the truth. Soon now, so shall I. Malachi. I awoke, feverish and barely conscious, I set to drawing these maps through the sable hours. By morning my fingers ached, my eyes burned, yet still I found no rest. The reverie commanded its rendering. The reverie device now stands completed. I have placed the first of my maps within its receptacle. I have taken my maiden voyage into nightmare. I know now that which sent me this precious gift. It knows me, expects my return. It would be foolish to disappoint. Malachi. The Gemling Queen? She's impossible. How did she survive? Why is she not one of the undying? No. No, these questions can wait. There's a more pressing one. Is she safe from the Ebony Legion? That's dark news, indeed. If Gravisius has the ribbon spool, then it's only a matter of time before the Ebony Legion breaks through the bloodied ribbons. Then they'll have the Gemling Queen, a living embodiment of the Cataclysm. Okay, so the crazy cat lady asked us to bring back her ribbon spool. It's probably rude of me to assume that she's a crazy cat lady, but she has all the signs. Except, no, cats. But I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Sweet. My ribbons forevermore. Forevermore. I hate forever. I could tear happy ever after from Bard's bleeding tongues. You're still here, not a cockroach. Oh, gratitude. Yes, I should give you a token. A token. What token? This? Is this to your liking? The cockroaches will come again. They want the twist. That cockroach emperor. The other bugs shout his name. Ravisius. Cross the river. Squash the emperor cockroach in his nest. The bridge. It is barricaded. That spawns a tricky question. Questions. Questions. I asked too many questions. Chit has told me so. I asked where it all went. Our feculence. He made them show me. Under the river, the sewers from this side to that. Filthy, fetid tunnels like a rower's cloaca. A black place, 
crawling with the undying. Once beautiful and arrogant gemlings, now the foul waste of the Empire. Fitting, isn't it? Apt. 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 I like you, not a cockroach. I like that you listen. It would annoy me if the Undying murdered you. Dormetic Sulfite. That's what you need. You have some already? You are a resourceful Umbug now, aren't you? Give it to me. I was all eyes and ears when Malachi worked. I will make something of your Thormetic Sulfite. I will forge an infernal talc that will bring the most furious of light to the Undying Darkness. A dash of arcanity. A pinch of insanity. A whisper of profanity. And the infernal talc is now ready. Well, now that we have what I assume to be is a ball of thermoturgical Drano, we can take care of that blockage. Well, that was surely a normal and everyday occurrence. Where your boss at? Where your boss at? Tukohama. So I know he's over here thinking he's all that and stuff. But I want to talk about these carpets. I mean, look at that, man. They're fireproof. I mean, dudes going off Sephiroth and summoning the meteors and junk, and they just put themselves out. Some of the carpets I've seen, I swear they soak them in like kerosene or something. That makes sense. Solaris was all bright and shiny. Lunaris is all bruising and dark and junk. Alright. Now we've upgraded to undead larpers. Wonderful.
you may remember hearing about a not-so-nice guy named Cole. Well, this is him. He's basically just another version of Brutus. No big deal. The aesthetic of this place is questionable. Before we go down to level 2, let's take a quick trip back to town. You are the true spirit of Makoro, the shark. Not the cowardly beast that sinks its teeth into the lonely swimmer. You strike the Waikoama, the canoe, spilling a feast of men into the water. Hunters turn hunted that you dine on at your pleasure. Have this, Makoro. Despite everything else you've done, to let piety live is to threaten the existence of every living thing on this continent. Look to the west of Gravisius' camp. You'll find piety in the Lunaris Temple, cowering behind her desecrations. And here we go. Piety, you are truly Kitava's slave, a daughter of corruption. Dude! Dude! What is wrong with you? But yeah, this is like legit creepy. The first time I played this game, this place caught my attention. But man, I hope this place has like flood insurance. Or flood insurance. I always go the direction with one wagon. Two wagons is a dead end. Seriously though, even ignoring what kind of horrible person you have to be to even pull this kind of crap. Where do you even find the time for it? It takes me like half an hour just to get up in the morning. Yeah, 
You there, a moment of your time. Yes, you'll do. Now listen carefully, for I do disdain repetition. There are those who live for greater things in Rayclast, and then there are those who just live. One of the latter is out there right now, grasping at our future with greedy little fingers. Slaughter the malcontents' protectors, but leave the principal antagonist alive. I wish to send a message with this massacre, far and wide, and for that I need a messenger with some influence. You ever notice when we meet up with one of these Forsaken Masters? They're always more than happy to stand there and not help us when we're getting attacked by monsters. Jerks. Anyway, this is Verici. His missions involve assassinations. Which is a nice way of saying, hey, keep doing that thing you've been doing this entire time. Except sometimes, don't kill this particular person. Whatever, buddy. The tool is sharper than it first appeared. Look for me in the Sun encampment should you wish to relieve me of further obstacles. You will be suitably compensated. You got some nice furniture here. We about to go have some words of piety. You've done your ancestors proud, Khan. Now. Here's your warrior's death! So we finally get to have a proper fight with Piety, who used to be the final boss of Act 3 during open beta. Whenever Piety steps on one of those portals on the ground, she changes form, depending on which kind of portal she steps on. This used to be a difficult fight back in the early stages of the game, but now I had to kind of go out of my way a little bit to give her the chance to show off both transformations. Take everything Dominus loves as he took it from me. Ding dong. Piety's off to meet the maker, is she? I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that little chat. Bring me back something nicer. You have claimed the most worthy of prey, Makoru. Piety, the mistress of corruption. I'm not saying that the war is over, but you've given Rayclass a much-needed respite. Because of you, this land lives to see another door. And don't forget that you've done Grigor and Clarissa a justice of some magnitude. They will wish to speak to you. There is nothing else. Wherever he is, I'm sure Tolman knows what you've done. I know you didn't do it for him, or for me. It doesn't matter. Piety's reign of cruelty is over. Thank you. See you. Piety dies amongst her abominations. 
her warped dream taunting her, maddeningly out of reach. As a poet, I'm fond of that creed of justice. Here, the executioner needs recompense. Unfortunately, piety was simply a puppet of a greater force. You've cut the strings, but the master remains. Dominus. That key you've picked up, I heard the blackguards talk of it. It's the one key to the Scepter of God on the northern edge of the Blackguard encampment. Only piety was permitted to carry it. Dominus accessed his laboratory at the summit of the tower via a pulley system rigged to the outside wall. That way will be barred to you. And I heard of no one, not even piety, going in or coming out of the lower levels. Go with care, exile. I can't imagine what's inside that tower if even Piety and Dominus feared to tread its steps. Well, I think that'll do it for this episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, and comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And also tell your friends, even the ones you don't really care about that much. It really helps me out. I'll see you next time. I'm sure you've heard of Malachi by now. Ever the heterodox, he sought otherworldly inspiration by imbibing a substance called ghost wine. For the purpose, he created the decanter spiritus. I found it on my last visit here. Liquid placed in this crystal decanter becomes quasi-apparitional in nature. I'm sure you can glean the decanter's usefulness to me. Conventional liquids simply don't hit the spot. I am one sorely parched revenant. I hid the decanter spiritus in the marketplace so as not to cause temptation for the less morally steadfast in my crew. Look to the carbon heraldry there and find a lion dancing upon the waves. Emperor Chittus was stabbed in the posterior by his own Lord Mayor on the eve of the Purity Rebellion. Chittus's grieving gemlings buried him in the Imperial Gardens and a plum tree was planted upon his resting place so that his mourners might taste of his glory for years to come. I found that tree and one of my men tasted its fruit. I've never seen so much agony crammed into such a brief moment. This uh, may seem a peculiar request, but please bring me one of Chittus's plums. This current form comes with rather frustrating restrictions. <laughs> it's a small improvement on my last incarnation, but I am a man who used to poke his sticky beak into the furthest corners of the world. Now I can barely cross the road. It was no mean feat getting here from Siren's Cove, I can tell you. So here's the truth of it. I intend to sup upon my own death. Oh, fear not. The All Flame will resurrect me and, with luck, will restore my full freedom. But for that to happen, I must die. And in such a manner as to excite the All Flame to utmost ferocity. I am convinced that only the fruit of Chittus can provide the demise of sufficient tragedy. <laughs> Life is full of painful choices, is it not? I visited San some thirty-odd years ago. Those ghasts, <laughs> the undying, you call them, scurried up from the sewers near the river and slaughtered all but a few of my most stalwart lads. Oh, they're a foul parody of humanity, those undying. Nothing in common with a fine, upstanding revenant like myself.
You've done for Gravisius. If only I could get word to that lad I smuggled away from the general's wife at the time. The good widow would need a sympathetic shoulder to cry on. Never here. Stay out of the shadows. They bite. Hello, Moana. Citizens of San that was. The Undying have been around for hundreds of years. Left to their own devices, they're likely to survive for hundreds more. Still, they're not immune to mortality's touch. They can be killed with some difficulty. The Exiled. There's still prey out there. An overreaching witch floundering out of her death. Happy hunting, Makoru. Yes? You find a high enough spot and you can see the Lunaris Temple over the river, at the western edge of the city. Since the Blackguards arrived, the clouds above that temple have been stained with the blackest of smoke. You can see it sometimes, when the westerly blows. It stinks worse than death. Hello. Gravisius dined with us once. This was before my father's gambling debts caught up with him. I dined with him again in Theopolis prison the night before my exile. He wasn't so polite that time. Thank you. That's one memory I can now put to rest. Piety's a genius, sculpting mere human clay into divine gemlings. At least, that's what she told me when she opened me up and buried a virtue gem in my entrails. Malachi did the same in the name of the Emperor centuries ago. Chittis' gemlings still rule San. We call them the Undying now. The Eternals revered Sun and Moon as the two eyes of their god. The right eye judging Solaris. The left eye merciful Lunaris. I can't imagine that god being overly merciful when she finds out what piety's been doing in her temple. For meat, such is life. When piety was experimenting on me, my consciousness was mercifully fleeting. In those moments of numbing darkness, I met a presence. Intelligence, power, immensity beyond the limits of my pitiable mortal senses. To this creature, I was but a raindrop falling into the sea. I heard Piety speak to her lackeys of the beast. It is the source of her thaumaturgy and the object of her ambitions. I believe Piety's beast and that dark entity are one and the same. Wherever it is, whatever it is, the beast is the cause of my malformation. It would not be a stretch of reason to consider the beast the source of all malformation in Rayclast. the most explosive of powders. A sprinkle, the gentlest of dustings of infernal talc will provoke gems to a molten rage, for the undying the very sun will rise within their flesh. <laughs> they will burn for their sins, not a cockroach. They will burn. I loved Malachi. He gave me gems, divine jewels for his gemling queen, for his dead queen. But I didn't want me dead. Malachi begged. For him, for the Empire. I chose me. Selfish me. The Empire died, and I live. I live, and live, and live, and live. I was the Emperor's favorite for a time. But Chittis had many favorites. 
He filled the scepter of God with favourites. Every now and then, he cleared away the clutter. Those who pleased him, they were given to his lords and generals. Those who did not, were given to his thaumaturgists. I talked too much, asked too many difficult questions. I was gifted to Malachi. My dear, troubled Malachi. <laughs>